Hello everyone, I am Noor Zainab and in this video I am going to tell you about the neuron. The neuron or the nerve cell is a structural and a functional unit of the nervous system. Our nervous system consists of two main parts, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The brain and the spinal cord make up the central nervous system, whereas the peripheral nervous system consists of all the nerves that emerge out of the central nervous system. The neurons, which collectively make up the nerves, are the main component of the peripheral nervous system. As we know that all of our body parts are made up of cells, and the cells make up tissues, and tissues make up the organs. So the neuron, which is a cell, what distinguishes the neuron from other types of the body cells? So let's discuss this. So what's the basic difference between a neuron and an animal cell? Both the neuron and the animal cell contain organelles, same organelles, such as the nucleus, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum. Whereas neuron is a specialized cell because it consists of specialized organs such as dendrites, exons, and the cell body, which is also known as the soma. These structures are not present in the animal cell. The neuron is also specialized in its function, such as its function is to spread information from one neuron to another neuron via electrical conduction. So we can say that a neuron is a specialized animal cell because it consists of some specialized organs such as dendrites, exon, and a cell body, which may also consist of myelin sheath. Whereas both the animal cell and the neuron contain same organelles. Also, the neurons are the fundamental unit of the nervous system and they are specialized to transmit information to the different parts of the body. The three main parts of the neuron that distinguish it from other cells of the body are dendrites, exon and the cell body which is also known as a soma. It may also consist of a myelin sheath. Here is a typical neuron or a nerve cell which consists of several parts and it also consists a specialized part which is known as exon hillock. Also, there is an interesting information about the neuron or the nerve cell that these neurons never divide. They are so highly specialized that they have lost the capacity to divide. And the neurons remain in the G0 phase of the cell cycle and they never ever divide as soon as they are specialized. It means that once they are specialized, they never perform mitosis or meiosis. Now let's discuss all the parts of a typical neuron one by one. The first part of the neuron is the cell body or the soma. Each neuron cell body consists of a nucleus, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell and ribosomes which help to make the proteins and there are many other components as well. The second part consists of dendrites which are like branches of a tree and their main function is to receive the messages from other neurons. The next part is the exon hillock and it is a very specialized part of the neuron which separates it from the cell body from the exon and it helps in initiating a nerve impulse. The next part is the exon which is a long tube-like structure that can end in a, another neuron, a muscle or it can be a gland. The exons always carry neural signals away from the cell body, whereas the dendrites always carry the signals towards the cell body. There is a myelin sheet, which is a lipid layer, a fatty membrane, which prevents the signal loss or the crossing, crisscrossing of the signals. Most of the nerve fibers are insulated by myelin, which is a lipid layer, and it helps in signal transmission across the neuron. Basically, myelin is an insulating layer or a sheath that forms around the nerves, including those in the brain and the spinal cord. Myelin sheath increases the speed of conduction of the nerve impulses in the exon. Myelin 
cheese is produced by oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system. It is the brain and the spinal cord, whereas the same function is performed by Chevron cells. It is they produce the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. So we can conclude that the myelin sheath is produced by oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system, whereas Chevron cells produce the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. The nerve fiber is not fully covered by the myelin sheath. There are small spaces where there, are, there is no myelin sheath and these nodes are known as nodes of Ranvier where there is no myelin sheath. As we know that the myelin sheath is a lipid layer and a lipid or a fat is an insulator and it does not allow the conduction of electricity. As nerve impulses are electrical signals, they cannot travel through the myelin sheath or the lipid layer. As a result, they have to travel by jumping across the nodes of Ranvier, which are which do not consist of the lipid layer. And this type of conduction is known as salty preconduction. It is the jumping of the nerve impulses uh, from one node of Ranvier to the next node of Ranvier. What is node of Ranvier? It is a layer which does not consist of the myelin sheet. Here you can see nodes of Ranvier whose function is to increase the speed of the transmission of the nerve impulses. This type of conduction is known as solitate tree conduction and this results in faster conduction of the action potentials or the nerve impulses. So here you can see different parts of an axon which are nodes of Ranvier and myelin sheet. Myelin sheet is a lipid layer and nodes of Ranvier are the parts of the axon where there is no lipid. So there is no lipid it means that nerve impulses can pass through them. As a result nerve conduction is jumping from one node of Ranvier to another node of Ranvier and it cannot pass through the myelin sheet because it is an insulating layer. Multiple neurons may be bundled together to form a nerve which are present in the peripheral nervous system. In the nervous system, the neurons are not physically connected to each other. There is a gap between two neurons as you can see in the images. This gap is known as synaptic cleft and the neuron which is before is known as presynaptic neuron and the after neuron is known as post-synaptic neuron. So then if there is a gap between the two neurons, how the impulses are transmitted from one neuron to the next? The presynaptic neuron releases some chemicals which are known as neurotransmitters and these neurotransmitters are transmitted to the post-synaptic neuron. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that allow the neurons to communicate with each other throughout the body. After the neurotransmitters are used up, they send the chemical, uh, chemical signals to the next neuron. They are uh, degraded by enzymes such as acetylcholine is degraded by an enzyme known as acetylcholine series. The places where two neurons connect with each other and communicate with each other are known as synapses. The nerve terminal, the synaptic cleft and the post-synaptic membrane are together collectively known as a synapse. Neurons communicate using both electrical and chemical forms of communication such as electrical communication and chemical communication. In chemical communication, the neuron, presynaptic neuron releases a neurotransmitter which then binds to the post-synaptic cell. Whereas in electrical communication, there is a generation of action potentials throughout the length of the axon and there is an ion exchange. Here is a neuron or a nerve cell which is consisting of many organelles such as ribosomes, polyribosomes, rough endoplasmic reticulum, missile's body, nucleus, nucleolus and nodes of Ranvier, synaptic cleft and here you can see a synapse which consists of synaptic vesicles, synaptic cleft, axon terminal. 
Our nervous system does not only consist of neurons, but there are special cells, which are the supporting cells of the nervous system. These cells are known as glial cells. There are many types of glial cells, such as oligodendrocytes, microglia, Schwann cells, and epidermal cells. Astrocytes have numerous functions in the central nervous system as they facilitate information transfer and they also help to maintain the blood to brain barrier. Oligodendrocytes form the myelin sheath in the central nervous system, whereas the Schwann cells form the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. Microglia cells are the immune cells in the central nervous system that provide immunity and protect against the pathogen. So we can conclude that there are many cells besides the neurons which can help in the maintenance of the transmission of nerve impulses and such as epidynamic cells uh, line the ventricles of the brain and they have cilia that promote the circulation of the cerebrospinal fluid or CSF that fills these components. So all these cells help the uh, neurons in the transmission of nerve impulses. Now you have to label the parts of the <coughs> Thanks for watching.